<sighs> All right, so the Eagles have just secured the club's second ever wooden spoon. I've literally just turned off the TV like 10 seconds ago and just hit record. So this is pretty unfiltered. I haven't really thought too much about what I'm gonna say in this video, um, but it's been a pretty interesting day. I am emotionally drained. The day started off with me waking up at six and checking the North Melbourne Gold Coast score. Naturally, my interest in that was, you know, whether North Melbourne were gonna win and avoid the wooden spoon. And sure enough, I watched the second half. Nick Larkey bags, what did he bag in the end? Was it eight, nine? I was actually quite invested in that North game, but watching the Eagles in Adelaide then, it's kind of drained me so much that I've kind of forgotten. Anyway, so the day starts with North Melbourne winning uh, winning their third game of the season, snapping a 21 game losing streak. Good for them. No, they're not tanking. Neither side was tanking. So it, it puts the Eagles fans in this awkward position for the second time in a row of feeling conflicted about how we go against Adelaide. And I decided that I just wanted a win. I wanted the big send off for Shuey and Hearn. And so I was barracking for a win big time. And that game was fantastic for about a half. In fact, probably more than that, probably three quarters, two and a half quarters. So many positives came out for that. I was convinced we were going to win and you know there was some factors in, in, in why we were winning obviously Adelaide's radar was completely off their goal kicking was shocking Tex Walker got a bit hungry obviously he kicked nine goals in the end so he had a great game overall but we were just cleaner Adelaide had I think it was 11-4 to nine goals 15 at one point the inside 50 count was very lopsided but at the same time if you're watching it if you're just looking at the stats it looks like Adelaide should have been, been winning fair enough but on the eye test you know I really thought the Eagles were going to win Tim Kelly played another amazing game. He's a chance for probably two Brownlow votes. I think you've got to give three to Tex if he kicks nine goals. But Tim Kelly, two. So Kelly was fantastic. Oscar Allen was great again with four goals. Didn't see him much in the second half of the game. That's because we really ran out of legs. Brady Hoff played one of his best games for the club as well. The guy looks and reminds me of a young Brad Shepard. Ultimately, though, the damn wall breaks. Adelaide are a good side. I'm not really surprised that they put us to the sword. And it might, I might have felt, you know, at one point we kind of demoralized them a little bit. They weren't getting reward for... All all their effort their season was done I really thought we were going to hold on but you know you factor in we ran over the top of the Bulldogs last week and you know that game went pretty much right down to the wire it took us all four quarters to win the game we we're pretty spent you know it's been a taxing year an emotional week so you yeah, know we ran out of legs in a pretty dramatic fashion and the scoreline I wouldn't say it favors Adelaide because a lot of those stats indicate they should have won by that much but if you haven't watched the game uh, you probably don't have a good appreciation for how much West Coast actually took it up to Adelaide. And I won't lie, there was I, mean, I knew that whatever happened in this game I was gonna end with a tinge of disappointment. I decided I wanted the win. I'm a huge Luke Shuey fan, I'll talk about him in a second, but I really, really wanted the fairy tale send off for both he and Hearn and uh, in a sense, Nick Nat. But I knew that if we had won, there would have been a tinge of regret over, you know, pick one and Harley Reid. This is a great year to hold pick one, which we now do. But obviously, you know, falling short by seven goals in the end, uh, I just feel really flat. Can't complain about the effort. I, I made the comment during the game I said to some Eagles fans winning games at this point of the year when it's been a terrible year to worsen our draft position looks bad you know you could say why are we winning these dead rubber games conversely had we won tonight we would have won three out of our last five and been a shade of winning four out of our last five because we were pretty unlucky to have a non-free against uh, Essendon we could have easily won that game and suddenly it's a pretty good end of the season just just ignore the derby for a second <laughs> no but I guess what I mean is it's pleasing that our form while we didn't get the job done today it wasn't totally in isolation there was a bit of a block of form there that suggests that west coast have improved massively and the difference is we had something to play for you know last week i would argue they were probably playing for simpson and probably respect this week it was obviously the farewell game and you could tell they really really wanted to win and i do think even though we lost tonight was good for our development you know that was probably the best team performance that Brady Hoff has ever played in in 35 games or whatever it is of AFL football. To be playing in a functioning team that is doing the right things and putting in the required effort and has a chance to win and has belief, that's really good for development. So in some ways, you know, in terms of our long-term future prospects, tonight was the ideal result. But at the same time, you know, I'm pretty sad that we've won our second wooden spoon. I know we deserve it. At least this time, actually, we do get pick one because the last time we won the wooden spoon in 2010, Gold Coast entered the composition and and they had the first three picks of that draft. So as a huge Luke Shuey fan, it was so sad to, to watch that game end in general, just because it meant the end of his career. I was saying on the podcast last week, you know, that Luke Shuey is the last player I'm ever going to idolize. I remember when he was drafted, I would have been 14 at the time, the 2008 draft, because my late birthday. I remember Shuey being considered our next great white midfield hope. And to some extent, yeah, he has been our best midfielder since that period. To see the, him play for the last time is um, is actually really sad. As I said in the pod, I'm 12 years older than Harley Reid, if that's who we end up recruiting. I'm now transitioning to a period in my life where, you know, I am 
am older than most of the playing group and therefore I can't idolize them in the same play. They still have my love and support, but it's different now. I'm starting to enter old man territory, which that's not the part that makes me sad. I'm just sad that I'm not going to see Luke Shuey play for the West Coast Eagles ever again. And Shannon Hearn as well, you know, like seriously underrated player. Debuted in 2006 and I remember that long running goal he got against the Brisbane Lions. I'm pretty sure that was his first kick actually. When considering how to replace some of these legends, you know, we can't replace Nick Nat. We may have replaced Shuey with Hewitt. Replacing Shannon Hearn is completely different. I was like actually thinking like if an 18 year old player with Shannon Hearn's current attributes right now was in the draft, they would go very, very late because on paper, he doesn't actually do anything spectacular. You know, sure when he was younger, he was a little bit faster, certainly could kick 70 meters very, very easily. That's a weapon that he's put in his back pocket for the last 10 years, I reckon. But an unbelievably smart, defensively sound, unbelievably strong defender. It's actually a really rare breed in the AFL these days, particularly when they're coming through the draft system. But amongst all the disappointment uh, and the, I guess the shame of winning the wooden spoon, even though it has been a good end of the season, it was a pretty shameful season for the most part of it. But we can sort of park that now. I think we can go into the next year with, with some optimism. We can go into trade period and the draft with some optimism. You know, the disappointment that I feel right now and the emotional charring that I feel, that will turn to excitement soon enough. We hold pick one in the draft. It's considered the strongest pick one prospect we've ever seen, literally physically strongest probably. So it's gonna be very intriguing what we do from here. I'm, I'm a little bit emotional still right now. I don't, I haven't decided whether I think we'll keep the pick or trade it. Um, listening to On The Couch last week when the Eagles looked like they had avoided the wooden spoon, Gary Lyons suggested that he thought that the Eagles were strongly considering trading with Melbourne. And by contrast, North Melbourne were not considering it. So there is a chance we trade pick one for you know a reasonably good offer. How do I feel about that? I don't know right now, but I, I am. I'm kind of starting to get excited by the prospect of Harley Reid being in the blue and gold next year. So I suppose that will all play out over the next weeks and months, and I'm sure it's going to be well covered on the channel. But at the moment, it's a weird mixed feeling, and it would have been a very different weird mixed feeling had we won tonight. But the Eagles put in a solid effort. I can't deny the effort. They tried their guts out. They've given us some reason for optimism going into next year. We will improve next year. I'm very confident of that. If we just get a the half decent injury run would be better. Will that be good enough to avoid the wooden spoon? I don't really know right now. We look like a long way off being a wooden spoon team tonight, but it really depends on the strength of competition because uh, North Melbourne could improve, you know? Clarkson fully in the seat of head coach, the enormous talent they have on their list in terms of those under 22s in particular. Probably even extend that to under 25 with LDU, Simkin and Taron Thomas. So, you know, there's just as much reason for them to improve it as us, you know? It doesn't look like Hawthorne who came third last, I think. They look nowhere near near being a wooden spoon side next year. So to summarize my thoughts, uh, really deflated to lose the game, really sad to lose Shuey and Hearn. Optimistic by the form we showed tonight, uh, you know, it's been four out of the last five games have been pretty decent. The other, the fifth game was an abomination. And there's still the big question mark of what, what happens to Adam Simpson. I, uh, I really don't think there was ever a chance of them sacking Simo prior to this farewell game. I think it would have been really inappropriate to have, you know, Matthew Knight step in as caretaker coach for the last game with Shuey and Hearn. So I don't think the fact that he has survived up to this point is necessarily an indicator that he will survive in general, but there seems to be a massive showing of support. And I do think it works in his favor that the, the team has responded since that derby. What do I want? I don't really know because it's hard to argue against the points of literally no coach of any club of any sport in any league to quote Kane Gorns, I know, would survive a performance like this with Adam Simpson. There has been extenuating circumstances but I don't explain it sufficiently. But do I? who do I really think is the best person to coach West Coast next year and sometimes we fall into this trap of not just the AFL world, it's broader sports and probably just the community as well, in that we see sacking coaches or pe people of positions of power as a mechanism to punish. But what is actually the best outcome for the club? Is it Adam Simpson coaching next year? Is it Dean Cox? At the moment, I know that Simo is a proven quantity and I do believe we will get out of this mess. And therefore, I'm leaning on the conservative side and probably keeping Adam Simpson, considering he's under contract. If he wasn't under contract, it'd probably be a different conversation. But at this point, I probably, you know, let him start 2025 and, you know, measure results against expectations and by middle of next year, if we're still in the same hole, he's well and truly gone. But we have seen a commitment to a new game style under him. And, you know, while there has been games where we just did not turn up, at least we know that the new system and the system and the way we played tonight is very, very different to the back end of 21. We have seen a relatively successful commitment and adherence to the new game style. So 
I don't know. I'm optimistic. It's time to get excited about the trade period and draft. Um, who knows what we'll do. I want to say thank God that season's over because it was shameful. But to be honest, the last five weeks were kind of fun. Other than the derby. Kind of reminds me of 2009 where we finished the season winning four of our last five. And ironically, we did miss out on Dustin Martin in that draft because we won four of those last five games. So and this year, at least, we still haven't lost out on access. We're still going to have access to those picks. Mind you, in 2009, we also did pretty well. There were a bunch of spuds taken before we took Brad Shepard at pick seven. But anyway, those are my thoughts. My very unfiltered thoughts just kind of spewing how I feel after the game but uh, let me know in the comments fans what did you think of it North fans if you're watching this um, how do you feel about avoiding the wooden spoon obviously you'd be pleased not to have won a third wooden spoon but maybe you're thinking about things like does this affect our priority pick bid Probably not, but it could. North Melbourne haven't won three wooden spoons in a row like it looked like they were going to going into this weekend. North probably miss out on Harley Reid now, one way or the other. If he doesn't go to West Coast, maybe he gets traded, uh, whether the pick gets traded to Melbourne. We will see. There's a lot to play out. But also, Eagles fans, let me know how you feel about this whole situation. I know there were people that were gutted we won last week, but um, they must feel a little bit at ease now. At least we got the best of both worlds. We beat a decent team in the Bulldogs who may or may not make finals at this point. Played really well. We played well in the last fortnight. And and we may still get highly read. Interesting times ahead, but let me know in the comments, guys, what you think. Um, I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And for now, I'll leave you to it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.